Good evening. I'm Les Swartz, and this is Swartz Talking Sports. We've got a great show tonight. We were gone last week. My producer, much needed vacation. He does it all, so he needed to get away uh, for a week in the sun, and uh, he's looking all tanned and ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, tonight, Al Chester, my co-host, Al the Rattler Chester, uh, some personal issues down in Florida. He's got to take care of some things in Jacksonville, so Al with you we wish you well and benny the book people are asking what happened to the book i said try the book's around he's still around but he's hosting his annual thursday night card game tonight so the book will be back with us next wednesday but uh, we've got a great show tonight we, we're going to really focus a little bit on the nfl draft and we've got a couple of guests coming on that could be part of that nfl draft but we're going to have our amazing crack producer tony run the opening rail and we'll bring on tonight's two guests and he just transferred in from Coastal Carolina where he was outstanding. May toward the end zone, diving catch. Now the quarterback is number 10, Drake May, University of North Carolina. They're saying could be a top three, four, or five pick, but it's the offensive line, the left side, the blind side. Left tackle, William Barnes, and left guard, Ed Montillas. Let's bring on William and Ed, and let's talk a little football and upcoming NFL draft. Hey, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. Thanks for having us. I know uh, we got got a lot of things to discuss. I know the draft is coming up in a couple weeks. We'll get into kind of – we'll get both your stories on uh, your careers in North Carolina, how you feared in in your pro day, which was, I think, two weeks ago, and maybe, you know, where you're expected to go in the draft or things like that. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first, I want to get into both your personal lives. You guys both are from Apopka, Florida. Played high school – what, you said Pop Warner through high school together. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, me and Ed have been together since Pop Warner all the way from the high school and then now college and now – you know, hopefully maybe one day, like, we'll be able to play again, play on the same side on the same NFL team. Who knows? But, yeah, we've been together. Like, we're basically brothers. Now, Ed, question. I know you guys both played together. What was the reason for you going to North Carolina? What drew you to the Tar Heels over maybe other Division One programs that you could have gone? Dad, please. I'm having a hard time hearing it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um what, what actually was the reason why you went to North Carolina and played for the Tar Heels? I'm sure you got other you know, offers to play in college. What actually drew you to North Carolina? Well, obviously, just their, uh, the education down here, just like getting a great education. And me and Will uh, went together as players. And, you know, we wanted, we wanted to both get great educations as well. And I know that it was a great place well, for one, and it was set me up for the future. So that's kind of what, like, defend all the other schools. Okay, I think we're having a little trouble hearing you. It could be an internet situation. I'm not exactly sure on your end. I don't know. Maybe you yeah. Might wanna, yeah, you might want to check that. Just We just didn't get yeah. all of that. Yes, sir. Yeah, we just didn't get it all. But, William, I'll ask you the same question. Um, so, did you want me to repeat that? Yeah, please, Ed, could you? Yeah, just the just the education at North Carolina kind of differentiated them from all the other schools. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wanted to just grow as a man here and meet some great people. And me and Will both kind of talked through it. And North Carolina was narrowed down to our final decision. Now, William, just curious. I, I know that, you know, obviously – uh, I, I know your mom, so and uh, shout out to Brian. Um, that was a it was it was a great get. I really appreciate her, uh, you know, uh, getting me in touch with you for the show. But I know that Alabama, I guess you know, uh, Alabama was looking at you in high school and some other big time, you know, SEC programs. Again, you spurred the SEC to go to North Carolina. Was it really an educational thing? Was it a chance to maybe get more playing time out of the gate? How did how what got you to Chapel Hill? Um, all those all those things really factor in, but I feel like the most important thing was just like how I felt about how I was on campus. Mm-hmm. Um, great, great. Um, every every trip that I took with like including with Ole Miss, Alabama, they were great visits and had great great things and great opportunities for anyone that wanted to go there. But when when I stepped on Carolina's campus, it just it just felt like the right place for me. And to add on to what Ed's saying, like the education is no doubt like stellar when it comes when it comes there. 
And I feel great about getting my degree from here. And um, ever, ever since I stepped on campus, I didn't look back and I had an amazing, amazing six years there that I enjoyed. Now, obviously, I think you get five, five recruiting trips. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's changed. What were the other recruiting trips? I'll go to you first, William, and then you, Ed. What were the other recruiting trips you took, William, besides North Carolina? Uh, I had Alabama, I had Alabama, um, Old Miss, and FSU. Okay, Florida those, those, I didn't take. I didn't take all five. I only took the four. Okay, because I felt like after when I went to Carolina, I was I was set, and that was where I wanted to go. Okay, Ed, what about you? Yeah, I visited uh, Florida a few times, Old Miss, and Miami, but I didn't really take a whole lot of visits. I kind of had my mind set up in Carolina. Yeah. Okay, I think. Oh, hold on, Ed. You got to move your. I think we didn't hear all that. Yeah, just kind of the audio. Uh, was a yeah, little... I, there I'm we not, go. I'm not at home right now. Oh, okay. All right. We we Are got you. you hear me? I th I think we got you. I think you you might want to repeat those uh, that yeah. list of schools for us, please. I didn't take a whole lot of. All right. Wow, we're having some serious auto, auto problems. You guys this, hear me? this is what happens right. with live television. This stuff happens. I mean, it does. Uh, yeah, we, we get you, Ed. Yeah. It's like every third word, something's. It must be a connection where you are. It must be getting a bad connection. So, uh, we'll do our best to work through it. But yeah, uh, I'm not currently at home. Yeah, we'll, we'll do yeah. our best yeah. to work through it. Um, so, so question. So. Last year, you guys, uh, I know that North Carolina started off like a house of fire. You guys were top 10, I believe, finished the year eight and five. Uh, you guys were the blind side for Drake May. And people are talking about Drake May, you know, being potentially the second or third quarterback taken in the draft this year. Uh, you know, maybe some people, things people don't know about maybe playing with Drake May. Is he in the huddle? Is he a talker? Is he a forceful kind of guy? Is he more laid back? Uh, we see him on the field. We see him making plays, but... The personality of Drake May, uh, which a lot of people don't see uh, it, during the game, in between the lines on the field, what's he like? Well, I can I can um, with just been going with Drake and playing with Drake. Um, honestly, he's definitely um, very mature for his age, and also knows when to take leadership when it's needed. Um, he he's um, just a great just a great guy, all around great guy, you know. He, he gets back there. He tells us what we need to do. And he's like, even when we're on the sideline, you know, things are looking down and we're trying to figure out what we need to do next. You know, he's in our ear. He's making sure that he's going down the line, so uh, dapping us up, making sure that we that he knows that all of us are important, like everyone that's in front of him that's protecting him. So the kind of the kind of guy Drake is, he's just one of those people that's just like looking out for the team. team definitely a team player. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, you know, we watch him on, on Saturdays and he certainly has the skill set to succeed in the NFL. He's got a big arm. Uh, I know before before we went live here, when you and I were talking, I mean, he can put him up and put him down. I mean, he's a really good runner. He's not just a scrambler. He could take off and get you 30, 40 yards. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, it's a great feeling when we're close to this, close to the end zone and we see Drake running for a touchdown. <laughs> Makes it easy to block. I, that's, that's what I say. I mean, you, you just put your guy that's down good. and he's gone. Um, so, Question asked both you guys. Uh, I don't know who wants to go first, but obviously, you know, you finish your career at North Carolina. You both get your undergraduate degrees, which is outstanding. Uh, preparing for the pro day. Uh, season's over. I, I don't know if you guys – did North Carolina even accept the bowl game this year? Uh, yes, we did. We went to um, the Duke Mayo's Bowl this year. Did you guys play in that game? Mm -hmm, okay, because some guys opt out. I mean, that's the new thing now. I, I guess if you're going to be a high first round draft pick, guys opt out and they don't want to get injured and they don't want to play. But um, so you finish the bowl game. Uh, what do you do now to prepare? Like, obviously, the next step is you know you got your degrees, which is uh, just outstanding. You know, sets you up for the rest of your life, educational wise. But now, is is it both your dreams to play pro football at the next level? Is this what you guys really want to do to 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 really get to the next level and play in the NFL? Yes, a hundred percent. Ed. Oh, go ahead, Ed. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. No, yeah, go ahead and uh, you can answer that question. Yeah, go ahead, Ed. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, you guys didn't hear me the first time. 
Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, you know, the NFL is a big thing now. Now, there are other options, too, because obviously, you know, you know, teams, there's a seven-round draft. If you get drafted late, there's obviously an opportunity as a free agent to go to a team that maybe is a good fit for your skill. And then now you've got the UFL, which is now up and running. It's the combination of the XFL and the USFL. It's another avenue to, like, you know, maybe hone your craft. Uh, you know, people are coming out of there into the NFL, the CFL, things like that. What have you been told in your workouts, your preseason workouts, maybe your pro day? I would say, I would say the main, the main focus, like before pro day, was just making sure that we're, we're, we're the best condition and just doing, making sure that we do all the drills that we need to. So for, for us, like me and Ed, we went down to Atlanta and we worked over at Vel Velocity um, Athletics Department, okay. which is um, near, near the Roswell area with the director, um, Joshua Richardson who's a fantastic coach and also a fantastic mentor and like all the guys that he has helping out, including Luke, Chris, and like Brad, who's basically our personal trainer on standby. They all take, they, they take care of us every single day throughout the process. Cause that's who, that's who me and Ed, that's what we discussed. And that's what we chose to like take care of us as we worked out and kept on going. So um, definitely, definitely during that time is just to focus on like all those drills that we're going to do all the drills that could happen and also just making sure that we're taking care of our body because that's important as well. Both you guys, give me a normal day training and preparing for your pro day in the draft. Is it, is it 30% lifting? Is it nutrition? Is it explosive speed and speed and, and drills and things like that or explosive drills? What percentage would you say? And, and what's the, what, what are the things you work on the most? Is it technique? Is it, you know, preparing, I, I guess, you know, on the pro day, I'm not sure about the pro day, the combine they do, the bench press for 225, how many reps? Is that something you did in your pro day? And and how do you prepare for it in a daily, just take a day of training. What exactly do you do? Ed, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I can answer it. So, sure. like, in the morning, we'll start off with just speed training, and we'll take a break, and we'll, like, make sure we get our meals in, maybe uh, get some rest, recover, get some recovery stuff done and then in the afternoon we'll lift and they kind of made sure we didn't like uh injure ourselves so we kind of kept a good pace there some plays draw up plays so it's kind of like a mixture of all aspects going into the draft Do you guys hear me yeah, yeah. We, we got you on that one um so, so I know someone's probably going to ask this question because they always do. I'm going to ask it. I'm going to beat someone to the punch here. Both you guys, what are your max benches? Because someone's going to ask that question. Oh, uh, my max bench was a uh, 19 reps. Wow. Okay, 19 reps. Okay. And what and about that was, like that was, after, that was after about everything that we did at the the pro day. Which so you, was, you're pretty tired. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. That was, so what do they do? So what are the measurables? Um, and it was two weeks ago. I know that I, I know I was, I'm trying to get film on you guys with the pro day. And it was just like 45 minutes of Drake throwing, throwing, throwing. But what, what, yeah. what measurables did they do? Was it the broad? Was it the long jump? Was it the do they do the 40? Do they do the, the three cone drill? Do they do the shuttle run? What exactly did you guys do? And what did you excel on? Um, so when we first when we first got out there, um, we had we had our trains with us, Joshua Richardson, which is also something great that he that they all came out there and supported us well so they warmed us up mm -hmm. and so the first thing that they had us started doing was just our measurements really so we went over there we um we we got down to our about, about our like um underwear compression shorts and um you know they they got our wingspan you know height weight mm -hmm. and then after all that you know they told us to warm up we got 15 minutes to warm up before our 40 yard uh run and so we had four, 15 minutes to warm up and then we ran and i feel like Honestly, I can I have I feel like forty was my one of my best um events because I had ran about a five five. Nice. So I felt really good about that. And then after that, it's about, you know, you we took we did uh two reps of that. So first forty and then another forty. Mm -hmm. And then when while you're once you're done with your second forty and everyone else is running, they kind of tell you to warm up. And for the next drill, which was um our was broad jump and vertical jump. So we did our my vertical was about thirty two inches and broad was about um about eight eight six eight seven. Okay. So I feel like my vertical was also another another event that I excelled at, which was pretty good. And um, after after those things, then we go on to the other drills, which was um the L drill and our shuttle drill. 
And so they had two, they had both of them going on at the same time at our pro day. So we just did, we did both of those. And then after, once we were done with those drills, then we just went on to, um, to the, um, you know, uh, what is it? A technical work, which is like, you know, the running backs, everyone getting in. And so Drake, Drake was up. So he, he threw for about 45 minutes while we all kind of sat there and, and waited for him to get done. And then O-line went to, to do our drills. And then after that, at the end of everything, that's when we did our benches. So I'm curious, who runs the pro? I mean, it, is Mac Jones present or any of the North Carolina coaches present? Is it run by NFL personnel that ran the combine? Like who actually runs this? Okay, so the guy that we had run is Brian Simmons. He okay. was out there. He was running. He was running it for us. Um, it, uh, he he was like, he used it used to be um, Daryl Moody who was with us, but then Brian Brian Simmons took over, and so okay. basically he was he's on staff with UNC, and he was running the whole thing basically. And but all of our some of our line, some of our um, coaches were out there, and some some weren't, but most most uh, Mac was out there as well. Mac okay. Brown. Okay. And if people are not familiar with Mac Brown, Mac Brown, legendary coach, won a national championship in 2005 with the Texas Longhorns. Now we have uh, we have viewers out there. Uh, we've got a lot of them tonight, and we've got some questions out there for both William and Ed. So we're going to go to Joni, our Q and A girl. Joni, I'm changing it. You're not the chat girl. You're the Q and A girl because that's what but we I don't do give best. the answers. <laughs> so uh, let's have Joni. Uh, okay. Hit the the North Carolina guys up. Question number yeah, one. Yeah. Hi. Welcome, guys. So, hi. so one viewer, Rob, asks, "It's two weeks till draft night. What do you have planned for the draft?" Uh, for the draft, I plan on going home and uh, being with family before the time before uh, this time comes, and like just making sure I'm staying in the best shape that I can be, but also just making sure to be around the loved ones, my loved ones, and making sure that I let them know like I couldn't have gone through this process without them. So. Definitely just like just being with family and making sure to stay in shape. So once, you know, if I do get that call, I'm ready to go. What about you, Ed? Yeah, same here. Just going to see my family at home and still working out, making sure I'm in shape for the draft. All right. Good question, Rob. Let, let's uh, I hope you guys get drafted. This would be so cool if you guys if you guys get drafted. It'd be awesome for us. I mean, and for you guys, obviously, too. Uh, let's go with question number two. OK. Um, Howard Bloom asks, any inside info on where Drake May is going? No. Oh. Inside is, info is to where Mr. May is going. Okay, but Inside. there is a, a follow-up question. Oh, follow-up is, question. Is Drake excited about going to the Patriots? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we don't know. Well, personally, we don't know exactly what's going on in Drake's mind, but you know, I'm pretty sure where, whichever, wherever he goes, he's going to be excited, and, and whoever he picks him up is going to have a great, a great player that that um that's going to make get things done. Who's who's going to show up every day? And make sure, and no matter like how old you are, like if he's leading the team, he's going to lead you. So, Howard, I That's can answer my... that question. The Patriots are going to trade out of three to Minnesota. They are in love with Drake May, and I'd be shocked if May falls more than five. And if he goes to the Patriots, I'd be equally shocked. So, uh, how about mm. question number three, Joni? Okay, question number three from Rob. Ed, I noticed you're a grad student. What are you studying? Ooh, well, I'm currently studying sports administrations. And I have my uh, thesis defense tomorrow. So I'm looking at the core values in uh, Division One football athletes in the, in the post-NIL era when it comes to, like, committing to a school. Well, you're going to be running a pro football team someday, Ed. You know that, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, but hopefully I can do something cool like that. <laughs> well, you know, you brought up a very important thing, and I'm just curious because you guys are now out of college in – NIL is such a hot topic button. It's NIL, it's Transform Portal. Those are big, big things. And we have a couple more questions, but I just want to throw this out there. Um, you guys got to North Carolina prior to the COVID time, and really NIL hadn't popped yet. If NIL is where it is right now, and a lot of guys are looking at this, does that change your process to where you go? I know you both said your know, education was a big, big uh, draw to North Carolina, but if you get a great deal somewhere... Um, does that maybe change maybe where you might have looked to go to school? I'm going to ask both of you guys that question. Um, for, for, well, honestly, well, for, for me, me oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, uh, for, honestly, for me, I feel like um, when it comes when it comes to uh, NIL, like honestly, it's a great opportunity and, and you know a great way for um, ch children to like you know guys like guys like us to like make our dreams come true like early in the co in college like you mm -hmm. know. But honestly, for honestly for me, like when it, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of like, dare I say, old school when it comes to um, that that kind of thing. So I feel like you know, 
when when I went to Carolina, like that's where I wanted to go. Like no matter like how how much money they talked about giving me or not giving me, like anywhere else, like I felt like that's where I need that's where I needed to be. And I I also used my faith as well because that's something that's huge in a part of my life. So I felt like you know God was telling me that this is where I needed to be, and and that's and that's all that matters to me. And and like at the end of the day, Ed, same same question. If you were you had your heart set in North Carolina, then all of a sudden another program comes along and says, "Hey, listen, we got a sweet nil deal for you." Uh, would you have still gone to North Carolina? Yeah, I, I believe that I still would have went to North Carolina because mm-hmm. I was thinking more uh, long term because mm-hmm. I know that all that money at once could be a nice. Like, very nice for someone that young, you know, but I don't think it would have helped me in the long term. So I think North Carolina was a great decision, even if even if I was in the NIO era during recruiting. But, okay. yeah. But. It's just such a hot button right now. You know, that's all that's all people are talking mm-hmm. about with, you know, college football and in, in college basketball especially. Uh, well, I know we have a couple more questions uh, for our guests, uh, William Barnes and Ed Montalus. So, uh, Joni? Let's hit up question number three. Okay. Howard Bloom asks, can you give us some examples of questions asked in the interviews by the pro coaches? Have you guys been interviewed by pros coaches at all? Uh, not coaches, but mostly just scouts. Mostly. Pro scouts. Yeah. So what type of questions? Uh, we'll go with uh, Ed. We'll go with you first on this. What type of questions do they ask yeah. to you? And then we'll go to William. Just like personal questions, they want to know whether or not if you were like a troublemaker growing up. They kind of want to just know your character, like knowing the type of player that they're mm-hmm. about to get. So they really didn't ask any football questions, which came to came, which was like a big surprise for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. But uh, some coaches actually asked to draw up plays, but they they just mm-hmm. wanted to know you from a personal level. Okay, and William. Yeah, to to piggyback on what Ed's saying, like they definitely want to know personally, like what. Like who who they who they're investing all this money into when it comes to like you know a player, and so like Ed's saying like definitely a per, on a personal standpoint a lot of personal questions like you know how you grew up like way back to when you were like like maybe Pop Warner, and so it just it just goes all the way back from there and then of course you know at some 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 scouts they tell you like what about um how you grew up and then other scouts would ask you you know like how Ed said you know drop a play. Or like, what's your favorite play? You know, zone draw things like that. And so, I feel I feel like you know, with different scouts, it all varies. So they, if they have more information on you, then sometimes they'll just ask like more personal questions. And if not, then it's just the other way around with like you know, football. And so it's it, it all varies. It varies. Okay, uh, I was gonna say. So some guys, it's more character things. Some things, it's more football IQ on that mm-hmm. on that side of it uh good question howard uh how about joni another question okay sean Connolly asks how much does the wingspan come into play Ooh, i would think that's uh, maybe more for a tackle right I, i'm just throwing it out there I yeah know. so um it def- <laughs> definitely the wingspan comes in for like uh definitely tackles because we want that uh, what the what the coaches are looking for is that long reach that the guys have to keep the defender away from them and knowing that you know especially on the blind side that their quarterback is protected all, at all times so that's that's definitely a big a big part of like why wingspans are so so like so much looked at. Now I have a question for both of you because you know obviously it's your dream to play in the NFL. Uh, whether or not you know you get drafted mid round, late round as a free agent, you know you're on a team preparing. Uh, the coach offensive line says to you, listen, the old, the old line coach. I know you were a tackle in Ed, you were a guard. We want to start moving you around, Ed. We want to tinker with you at center. We want you to take snaps. William, we want to move you from left to right, maybe a guard position. Um, is that is is it pretty much, hey, whatever they want me to do to make the team I'm going to do, uh, do you prefer one position over another because you played it, you know, a long time at the college level? Or are you guys just willing to listen? We're, we're making a roster any way we can. Well, I, I feel like I can answer that for since uh, since I played like basically all the positions except for center. OK, um, when, when it, basically when a coach looks at you and he says, uh, this is where I need you to play. Like, you know, it's, there's no really discussion about it or really back talk. It's just get it done. And I feel like that, that just in the end, it makes it, it makes everything better in the long run, because then like with with different um, football teams in the NFL, they can look at you and say, like, OK, this guy is very versatile. He can move on different positions that if ever we need a chance. You know he can play that position very well because he's played it before. So definitely, definitely, um, it can be at first it can be a little uh, disheartening because like you know you have to go to a whole new position. You know, sometimes like especially from left to right, 
from where I did because I started out at right guard and then I moved over to left tackle. So definitely, you know, with different like different plays that we have, I have to make sure like, you know, OK, I'm not on the right side anymore. I have to make sure I'm on the left side. So make sure all I, I know everything that I'm doing on the left side and make sure everything I know to do when I'm moving to the right. So it, it all it all depends. But like for me, it was like it wasn't that hard to pick up. But once I like, you know, I stayed in my playbook and I just make sure to talk with my coaches and, and just make sure to stay in, stay in and out of the facility every day. You know, it makes it that much better. Now, I have a question for Ed. So, Ed, you're a guard, left guard. Did you ever take snaps yes, at center or during practice? Did you ever play the center position or uh, the right guard position? Or were you pretty much installed at left guard and that was your position throughout your career at the Tar Heels? Yeah, my I mainly did play left guard my whole time at North Carolina. But last spring, I got in that little bit at right guard because we were kind of rotating around. But in the league, I, it, it doesn't matter where I play. I'll be happy to play anywhere. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but I'm, I'm so used to playing the left side. So it, I'm sure the right side will come easy, too. One of you guys have to learn a long snap. Long snappers last like 25 years in the league. It's unbelievable. It's a great position. <laughs> Some of these guys are playing until they're like 40 years old. It's amazing, you know. But yeah. we, we have a couple questions still. Uh, we've got a lot of viewers out there tonight. You guys are pretty popular. So, uh, Joni, let's have another question for our oh, guest tonight. Okay. Um, so we've got Rob and, and O.O. Chop have similar questions. So well, I'm Who gonna... O.O. Chops? O.O. Chop. Okay. Yeah. Um, what other schools did you consider and would you have chosen? Ooh. Well, we, we went through it a little bit. But, a little bit. But yeah. uh, why don't you guys just kind of re-up on that as to maybe other schools you, you briefly looked at and, and why you chose North Carolina. I know we went over it, but. Um, I can I can talk a little bit about. Um, so, so I, for, uh, Ed, did you want something to say? Go ahead, Ed. No, I'm probably going to say the same as you. I was going to say that. Uh, when it came down to the final three, I think it was uh, Ole Miss, Florida, and North Carolina at the end, and then we, and then it came down to the two schools, just Ole Miss and North Carolina, yeah. and we picked North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely like, and also like, we also talked with Florida a little bit too. We were at Florida, and we also like, you know, since you know it was around home, uh, we just we were thinking about like going there as well. But then it, ultimately, we ended up at North Carolina once we took that visit, and you know, the rest is history. Well, I, I know. William, I have to ask you this question because I know they recruited you. What was it like meeting Nick Saban for the first time? I mean, the guy is, I don't like using the word goat because I don't believe there's any goats, but he's ultimately the most successful coach in in this decade or this, you know, era of football, uh, you know, with this new era. Uh, what was he like in person? What was he, was he different than you might have thought or well, you- it's it's funny. It's funny you say that. When I did go to go to visit uh, Nick Saban, he was actually on vacation. So <laughs> when I went into his office, he he Facetimed me off of um his boat, and he was telling me about all the great things about Alabama and that how he would love to have me here. So it, and we we had just it was during a it was during a camp during the, in the summer. So I'm pretty sure he was out with this. Yeah, he was he was out of uh, vacationing. So I was I was just like taking it back because the person that I've seen on TV so much was like, I was on a FaceTime call with him. So that was honestly a great experience. And, you know, he's just, like, he's just how he is just on the TV, mm-hmm. you know, probably a little bit softer because, you know, he was trying to recruit me and all that, but, you know, definitely, definitely a great, a great guy. And I appreciated him even, even giving me a chance to like talk to me and tell me that, you know, I had an offer to his school. So that was, that was honestly a great time for me. Now curious for both of you guys, uh, some of your ex teammates, uh, that have now made the jump to the NFL maybe last year or the year before. Uh, can you name a couple of these guys that have now playing in the league? Yeah, you can answer that. Uh, from last year? Last year, I mean, like, and uh, since you got on course. campus, yeah. Yeah, like guys like Sam Howell, there's some D-linemen like, uh, what's, it? what's his name, uh, Jalen Dalton, got Jason Strobridge, uh, there's a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, we have, a lot of we have a lot Antoine of Green. Like we came in with Antoine. He's mm-hmm. currently with the Lions right now. Okay. And if you guys, do you guys keep in touch with the, you know some of these guys? And and maybe I know you follow their careers obviously in the NFL, but do you guys like hit them up and you know maybe text things like that, see how things are going? Of course, yeah. Like we have a lineman that I still talk to, <clears> like Josh, Joshua Izudu and uh, Marcus McKeithen, who are both at um, the New York Giants right now. Okay. 
and I keep I keep in contact with them heavy, you know, especially when I was going through this process, I definitely, you know, lean to them, asking them questions like what what steps did you take and like what steps um, do I need to take? Is there anything that I need to know before going in? And, you know, they of course, since like we're brothers and like we played so many years together, they were always there to help. They were always there to help us. And that's the kind of guys that come out of North Carolina. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. I still have not got up to the stadium to see a game and that that's definitely a, uh we have to do that sometime in the next year yeah, they, got, they got they got new stuff in there now they got new light shows that mac brown put in there which he did a great job with so i think it, it's definitely a time if, if there's any time to go check out a game it's now yeah i think it's i think i have to make a road trip this year um uh, we have any more questions joni or yes we, yes we do we have one more we have one more question it's and then i'm going to ask you guys a question and then i'm going to say thank you guys so much i know you've taken enough of your time up so uh let's go to one more question from okay. our viewers yep sean Connolly. he wants to know pop warner what impact did that have on you wow that's going back Jeez. Um, for me, the impact it had for me was like I had co I had coaches that um would definitely like get on me because at first like football was I didn't think football was gonna be my sport. At first I thought it was gonna be basketball for like how tall I was. And, you know, I had coaches like one of my coaches, Coach Donahue, he was a great guy that always take care of me, great friends with my father and just like he, he's he's probably one of the main reasons how I how I got to be as tough as I am now because he, he wouldn't let any he wouldn't let anything slide. I also had my, my other coach, his name was Coach Green. He always looked out for me too during my Pop Warner days. And honest, honestly, the best, like I can remember the best times that I was there was honestly just, just getting some orange slices during halftime because I was so tired from, from playing. But honestly, honestly, just just like just like the coaches, definitely the coaches had a great impact on me and like def definitely um got me to where like I could handle anything when moving up into like, you know, high school and, and college. And same question, uh, Pop Warner, uh, your experiences and things like that help you grow as a player? Yeah, I feel like you grow as a player just being like, just learning to be a great teammate, just knowing that uh, there's great coaches out there that care about me, learning like different positions. that Because at the time I was playing both, you know, O-line and D-line. And it was just kind of just a blast, you know. Well, we have, well, I'm telling you, the questions are keep, you guys are popular tonight. The questions are just keep rolling along. So let's go to Joni, our Q&A girl, and uh, we have another question for William and Ed. Yes. Um, one viewer, Daniel Chris Kistart, I'm sorry if I mangled that name. Are you still reaching out to potential draft team prospects? Uh, of course, uh, that that also helps out with um, our our agent. Like my agent is Orlando Arnold, and he like kind of like lets me know if any teams are interested or to or talk out to me. Um, I've like I've heard things from the Chargers, Arizona Cardinals. So def definitely, definitely um, keeping keeping uh, mm -hmm. uh, my uh, my agent definitely keeps me in contact with those guys, and he also helps out with anything that we need that we need when it comes to like the draft process. Chargers are my favorite team, William. I'm just gonna say I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm psyched Harbaugh is there. I'd love to see you with the bolts on the side of the helmet. Uh, Ed, what about you? Uh, who, who, if you sign with an agent, who would that be? Oh yeah, my agent is uh, Lamar Williams. So he does all he handles all that stuff for me. He talks with a bunch of teams okay. and things like the 49ers, the Ravens, you know, the Chargers. Okay. So he keeps me updated with that stuff. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, we have another question. We do. Okay. Howard Bloom. He wants to know what advice have the guys who are in the NFL given you? Oh, that's actually kind of a yeah. good one. What uh, what advice have uh, some of your peers given you about what to expect get, or getting into the NFL? Um, one one thing for me is uh, with Marcus McKeith and like he was telling me that you just have to love football and just like treat it like like it's something that is, like not a job but like it's kind of like a lifestyle because you know for him he says that he's in there he's in there from early morning to like late night like you know that's how the saying goes be the first be the first one in the last one to leave so i feel like that 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 um that advice helps me to like prepare myself to to know exactly what we need to do when we get to the like if we had a chance to get to the nfl mm -hmm. and to know what it takes and like you know sometimes it can be grueling because you know it's a it's a very long it can be a very long season but um, just stay, just staying in that, just staying in routine. It's all about the routine, is what he tells me. And at the same question. So yeah, I also spoke with Marcus McKeithen and uh, so basically he just told me, you know, just be myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more prepared than I, you know, I think I am, and uh, you know that kind of dedicate football a little bit more than I have in the college space because you know college you have school going on. 
So, you know, but when, once I get to the league, it'll just be mainly football focus for us. Well, I, I know uh, our time is short. I know you guys have, have spent so much time with us tonight. And I really, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we, we, we've wanted to get you guys on for a long, long time. So thanks for taking the time out of your schedule. I know you're preparing for the draft and everything. The one question I had, and, and it was kind of an offshoot question. You're, you're not at North Carolina. You are no longer college students. But, and William and I touched on it in, in the pre-production meeting, is in this day, in the, this, this day and age in betting because I'm in the state of North Carolina and now it's FanDuel and it's DraftKings and it's this thing and that thing and MGM and everyone betting. It's just a personal opinion on both of your parts. Do you think that this potentially could jeopardize college sports down the line where I'm not saying point shaving, that's been going on for years. People have done that. I'm just talking about players just saying, hey, I just want to put a $20 bet down or a $25 bet down, whether through their own account or somebody else, because it's just so prevalent and it's so widespread now. You turn on the television and that's all you see is sports betting. So, again, you guys are out. I don't think anybody was involved with it, with you guys at all. But do you think that this could potentially be a problem in college down the line? Mm, I, for, like for me, I, mean, like I, know. I feel like it could be a problem with the. Oh yeah, I'll, I'm keep going. Uh, oh, go ahead. Ed. Mm -hmm. Said about a bet that they lost and kind of blame it on the college players, but uh, I just feel like it, it will be fair to the players, you know, because we're out here being students and you know we're playing mm -hmm. a game that we love. We shouldn't have to be worried about a fan being upset about something like betting on money, betting their money on the on the game or something. I agree with that. I mean, it's just that's that's the thing, William. I think. Maybe more so than the players, actually. It's it's the fans, and you know they're they're out there yelling, "Hey, you cost me this, you cost me that." It's like, hey, you guys are busting your butts to do the best job you can on the field. You're not really worried about what these people are wagering. You're going out there to do the best you can and win a football game. Am I right? I mean, so I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, when it comes to betting, like I, I or gambling, I, I'm not I'm not doing any of that. But um, and to, like I'm with you. I, I don't do it. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, I can understand like, you know, a fan being upset, like if, you know, they're, they're parlayed in here or whatever, but you know, like when it comes, when it comes to us, like everything, everything that matters is like on the field, like the fans are just as important, but like once we're on the field, like mm -hmm. everyone that's on the field with us is what's most important in that moment. Yeah, so no. I, I, yeah, I, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, I got to say it's a breath of fresh air. You guys, both, both you gentlemen, you're student athletes, you know, you played a sport, you went there, you got your, you know, your scholarship, you got your degree. Most importantly, you guys are tremendous students and tremendous athletes. And I think that's what's kind of missing in a lot of the stuff in the day and a of transport portal. And I want more playing time. I want to go here. I don't care about this. Just get me the money. I want to do this. You guys are a breath of fresh air. So I want to thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining me here on Sports Talk and Sports. And I wish you guys nothing but the best in a couple of weeks. I hope both your names are called on draft night. I will be watching. All our viewers will be watching, all fans of Sports Talk and Sports. So uh, for me, I, I really appreciate both you guys taking the time. Uh, please keep in touch with us. Uh, I, if you guys make a, make a team, which I think you will, you certainly have the potential. We'd love to have you back in an NFL uniform. Of course. Thank you so much for having us on, Les, really. It's been, it's been Thanks awesome. for having us. No, thank yeah. you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, listen, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll see you in a couple weeks in the draft. William Barnes, Ed Montalus, former North Carolina Tar Heels, offensive line. Uh, I will be back after these messages. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care. Forever 24 Fit, Leland's only gym with 24-hour access. Get fit when it's convenient, utilizing life fitness, cardio, and weight machines. And for those of you who prefer free weights, there is a free weight area as well. Start your membership today and get on your way to a better you. Six Happiness. Enjoy fresh Asian cuisine in a relaxed and friendly atmosphere where we believe good times deserve great food. Featuring the best sushi chefs in the Leland area. So come on in and we guarantee you will be delighted.
Welcome back to Swartz Talking Sports. I'm Les Swartz. What a great show. Uh, like I said, a breath of fresh air. We talk all the time about Transport Portal, NIL, what's wrong, realignment, conference realignment. Uh, both these two gentlemen, tremendous. They are student athletes. They went there. They got their degrees. They're working towards, you know, a double degree from William, I think, Masters for Ed, and their aspirations in the NFL. And I, I, I really hope that they both make it because they both deserve it. They put in the time on the field and in the classroom. So outstanding. I wish Al was here. I wish Benny were here. I want to I want to follow up on college basketball. It's over. Uh, my four teams that I had in the Final Four did not come to fruition. None of them made it. But uh, congratulations, first of all, to the South Carolina Gamecocks women's team, Don Staley, undefeated season. They are now what UConn was. They are the standard bearer for women's college basketball. They beat Iowa 87-75, uh, the most watched game in college basketball this year. Actually, most watched event other than an NFL game, which is incredible that they actually outdistanced the men this year. Um, a lot of it due to Caitlin Clark, the phenomenon that is Caitlin Clark. She had a great first quarter, 18 points, and then pretty much South Carolina put the clamps on her. And uh, But she gets to the championship game two years in a row, comes up empty. But again, the Lady Gamecocks, 87-75, Dawn Staley. She has got a juggernaut of a program. On the men's side, the UConn Huskies do it. They repeat. Third team to do it since UCLA, which, my God, they're, they're out of the conversation. They've won 10 in a row. They beat the Purdue Boilermakers 75-60. to 60. They beat their opponents by an average of 23 points. That's two seasons in a row. They go undefeated and win every game by double digits. Incredible effort by Dan Hurley. Uh, I think the best coach in college basketball right now. My hope is that the Kentucky Wildcats do not back up the Brinks truck, and he takes the money. Please stay in stores. Stay in Connecticut. Stay in the Big East. We need you. We want UConn to win a third straight. They are now the standard bearer for the Blue Bloods. Six championships since 1999. Calhoun got it started with three. Kevin Ali got one in 2014, I believe. And now Danny Hurley's gone back to back. So tremendous season. Congratulations to the Huskies. Big news. Uh, two days ago, John Calipari leaves the Kentucky Wildcats for Arkansas. He takes less money. Where in the world does a coach take a million and a half dollars less to go to another team? Evidently, the pressure was on Calipari. Back-to-back -back seasons where his team, a lot of people had them pegged for the Final Four this year, and they get knocked out by a 13 and a 14 seed. So I think the pressure was on. I'm not sure uh, the athletic director, Barnhart, really wanted Calipari there. So he takes the exit. He goes to Arkansas, and I think he'll succeed at Arkansas. Musselman's done a great job at Arkansas. He sub subsequently went to USC. Um, Arkansas has gone to two Elite Eights and three Sweet Sixteens on the Musselman. So it can be done. Nolan Richardson back in 94 won a championship with the Razorbacks, and Eddie Sutton had a great run in the late 70s and early 80s with the Razorbacks as well. Who is going to succeed Kentucky at Kentucky? Who's going to do it? Is it going to be Hurley? He said, no, I'm out. Uh, is it going to be Drew? Scott Drew, the coach at Baylor. Did you ever think that a coach at Baylor was going to turn down Kentucky? He did today. He said no to Kentucky. Uh, Nate Oates, the coach at, at Alabama. No, he's staying with the, uh, at, with the Tide at Tuscaloosa. He got to the Final Four for the first time in Alabama history. Bobby Hurley said no. And Billy Donovan, who I think would probably be the best fit for the program, uh, a Patino disciple coaching in the NBA with the Bulls, he said now he's committed to Chicago. If it's my guess, there's going to be four names that people are going to look at. Unless there's a surprise and Hurley does jump, which I hope he doesn't. Todd Golden at Florida did some great things at San Francisco before he got to uh, Gatorland. You got Bruce Pearl at Auburn, who's won everywhere he's gone. Granted, there's been issues with his programs, but the guy's a big-time winner, and he's done it in the SEC. Mark Pope, the coach at BYU. He's a former Kentucky Wildcat, won a national championship in 96. And here's my guess. I'm going to say T.J. Otzenberger, the coach at Iowa State. He's done some great things with the Cyclones. They don't have nearly the resources that Kentucky does. If he goes to Kentucky, I think he makes some inroads, and I think Kentucky is back to where they need to be. So that's just my my take there. We're normally going to do the the wrap, but since I don't have my co-host, I don't have Benny the Book, I'm just going to say, if you're checking out the show for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. We're up to 725. We need to get to 1,000. It's my drive for 1,000. So if you like the show, please let us know. Comment. 
you know, let us know what you like. Let us know where you want to go with the show. What guests you would like us to get, we'll do our best to get them on for you. But please, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and tell us how much you really, really enjoy the show. And anything I can do to improve it, I'll do my best. Uh, we will be back next week, hopefully with a full crew. It's going to be NHL time. I've got Andrew Dunn, who was with us earlier with Sports Edit Podcast. He knows his NHL. He knows the playoffs. They start next week. We're going to handicap the playoffs. We'll make our playoff prediction. Who's going to take home the cup this year? Uh, sorry, Boston fans. The Bruins aren't going to do it. It's going to be another downer year for the Bruins in the playoffs. That's just my opinion. But we'll be back with Andrew next Wednesday. We're going to go 8 o'clock, not 7. He's Central Time. So we're going to do the show at 8 o'clock next Wednesday. So for my guests, William Barnes and Ed Montalus, for my entire Swartz on Sports team, Tony Smiraldi, Joni, my Q&A girl. And next week, we'll have Alan Benny back. This is Les Swartz. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have a great week, everyone.